Hello, uh, my name is Naftali Faulkner. I made Umurangi Generation. So, they asked us to give an interview. I didn't read what the uh, criteria was, so I'm going to just talk about um, something that's on my mind, especially when it comes to Umurangi and um, indie game development. So, I think that the process of creating an indie game is something that seems very difficult, especially when you haven't made anything. And it's a very daunting thing creating. You know, I became a father this year, I can say that from experience. But creating something isn't hard uh, if you sort of have a little bit of a structure to follow. And I wanted to share with you today um, what I've sort of been thinking about as the beginner indie structure or some guidelines that indies can follow to actually follow through with their games and create, uh, you know, things they can sell and live on and so forth. So this is, I think, going to address a couple of problems many indies face when they're in that sort of, um, you know, pre-game released hell uh, where the game isn't really a game yet, it's just a collection of GIFs. So, the first thing you should do, I think, as a game developer in this sort of indie space is you should focus on one game mechanic as your primary game mechanic for the entire game. And as an indie, that's all you're allowed to work on at the moment. You can do two when you've made a game, or three, but for the moment, just allowed one. And the idea around that is you have one game mechanic, and in that game, you should experiment with the different ways you can express that one game mechanic. So, what does that mean? What that means is, you know, if we think about Mario, uh, you know, what was its one game mechanic in that original game? It was jumping. So when you play that original Mario game, you jump and then every level in that game is about different ways of you figuring out how to use that one mechanic. And, you know, we all know YouTubers love Mario and they'll talk about 1-1 and all that, but what we should also think about is sort of how, you know, that one game mechanic can sort of become, um, you know, used in different ways. And, and it's, it's a design challenge for you as a designer to think about how you're going to do that for your indie game. So with Umarangi Generation, for example, the one game mechanic was taking photos. And that doesn't mean that I'm not allowed to add anything other than taking photos, but it all has to link back in some way. So all the equipment and everything you get in the game is still related to taking photos. It's just related to taking photos in different ways. So all the mechanics are things like lenses and lenses change how you take photos or a flash and the flash will change, you know, what the photo looks like when you take it because you have a lot of light in the photo now. Or it can be something that's not really related to photos, but it's more around the exploration elements. So very late in the game, you can unlock jet boots that let you hover in air for a little while. And the way that changes that one mechanic is that now you can stand and just sit in a high area that you couldn't before, and now you can take photos just a little bit differently. You've got a little bit more wiggle room to do your mechanic. So. As an indie game developer, especially if you're a solo and you have a project that's already along or you haven't started yet, one thing you should think about is what is that one game mechanic that you want that game to be? And I think about this a lot. Uh, you know, one of the best games, in my opinion, that came out this year is a game called Alekhead by uh, Namasan, who I met in Tokyo this year. And it has one central game mechanic and then it twists it midway through and that one game mechanic is that your little character will electrify things that they come into contact with and it will change from blue to yellow and every single screen or every level you go to in that game is 
one more way of making you think about that one game mechanic. And then a little twist happens a little bit further as you play. I'm not going to spoil it. You should go and play the game yourself. But then that one game mechanic gets expanded just a little bit more where now there's different ways you can sort of make levels and, and, and explore that mechanic. So that's the first rule I think with being an indie is that you should figure out what that one game mechanic is and that's your exploration, your little experiment that you get to try in that little game. The second thing I think about is length. Now, something I've seen is that you have game developers who have come past that one game mechanic idea and they've executed it really well and then they don't really know when to stop. Now, you might call me old school for saying this, but it's very much okay to make a sequel. You don't have to do a live service game that continues to be updated or anything like that. It's okay to actually finish an idea, cap it off, sell it, ship it, that kind of thing, and then revisit it in a sequel where you can say, I've had some time to look at this, to cool off from it, and I can see really cool ideas I'd like to try now in a sequel. So as an indie game developer, I think that depending on your um, project, you should think of a number in mind of how many levels you want to have. Now, I'll use an example of my game, which started with eight, and then we made a DLC that upped that number to 12. So it had four extra levels that explored a little bit more of what you could do in that space. But I'll use an example of the game that inspired me as a way for you to think about this, and that's Hotline Miami. From memory, I believe Hotline Miami has between 12 and 20 levels, you know, it's not a long game at all. And if you think about a number that you think fits the, you know, size of what you're trying to make, uh, and I would just say, if you really don't know and you're really scratching your head and you're overthinking it, if you spent more time thinking about that number than you have about what you're gonna have for breakfast, just go with 12. Okay, 12 levels. You can The best thing about that is you can separate that in many ways to do your pacing, right? So if you want to say, I want to have a beginning, middle, and an end, well, with 12, now it's four for the beginning, four for the middle, four for the end. Or let's say you want to say, um, you know, revisit a mechanic twice. Well, now it's very easy to say that you have six, you know, six mechanics in two levels, that's 12. Okay, that's that's just a, if you need some guidance or you need that little bit of a nudge on that, 12 is the number you go with, right? The last thing to consider about game development um, that I think a lot of indies probably don't talk about enough is it's that last 10% that you have to finish. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, I had a chat with my friend who released a game this year and just like me, he was in the same boat, which is that that last 10% is the most grueling if you're ever going to be putting stuff out on consoles, which is you've got to go through your QA, you've got to, it might run well on your machine or well on your computer, but these different um, platforms will have different requirements that you've got to adhere to. And so the thing I think around that is just when you think it's done, it's just got a little bit more to go. And getting to that final five to 10% is a very good milestone, but it's that kind of thing where you're just barely there. And those last couple of meters is kind of the hardest because it's sort of the one where you, your brain starts to play tricks on you. Oh, what if no one likes it? You know, what if, what if no one plays it? You know, what if, what if, what if, right? Um, what you should really be thinking about is actually I've just made a game. I've done something that 90% of indie developers can't actually do. And you know what, even if your game is a giant bomb and no one does play it, you know what looks really good if you ever want to get a job? That you've actually finished what you, you started and you, you've gotten through to the end. And you know what, you might have made a totally crap game, but when someone comes along and they say, I need help with that last 10%, guess who can help them out or offer their services? <laughs> Um, you know, I, it's that kind of thing, right? This is, this is part of the industry. And I think um, the quicker you learn about that last 10% or become aware of that last 10%, um, the less frightening it's going to be, you know? Uh, I, I think about how like game development itself is kind of in this space where 
we often hear a lot about, you know, juice and flow states and all this stuff from people who probably haven't even been in that last 10%. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really, I think, about growing as a developer. Like, you you don't want to stay in the kiddie pool forever. You want to be at that point where you can say, yeah, I did make a game by myself. And now I'm moving up a little bit more and I'm making a game as a team. Or, you know, I did really well and I was able to get a job uh, at a studio I've always wanted to work at, right? So, yeah, I hope this uh, little chat was uh, inspiring. I know I didn't really talk about my game much, but I think once you make a game, um, you'll probably agree with me about a lot of this stuff. And I think about that kind of... um, you know, when I was in that process of doing this kind of thing, um, I kind of wish someone had just told me because at the end of the day, it's all going to be all right. You know, if your game ended up bombing, that's okay. Uh, you know, yeah, you won't have a house, but you're a millennial anyway. You were never going to have a house anyway. (laughs) Um, so yeah, I, I think, you know, if you're a game developer, finish your game, put it out there, see what people think. Um, You know, if it ended up having problems in it, that's okay. You can learn for next time or, you know, someone can tap you on the shoulder and maybe you'll listen to them. Who knows? Um, So, yeah, I hope uh, this has been helpful. um, And I hope you finish your games.